I'm Jeannie Schwader with Automation.com. I'm here today with Rick Kirkpatrick at ABB's Automation and Power World. We're going to be talking about drive basics. Rick, can you tell us what a variable frequency drive is? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, variable frequency drive is used to control a standard AC motor. AC motors that are connected across the line will only run at one speed, but if they're used with a variable frequency drive, they can run at literally any speed up to their maximum rated speed. And you might want to do this because of uh, sometimes the process itself requires you to be able to change the speed, like on a conveyor, or you might want to do it because of energy savings reasons, like on a pump or a fan. Can you elaborate what are the primary advantages of using a drive in an application? Um, sure. A, uh, for, for pumps and fans, the, the advantage boils down largely to an energy saving advantage. If you uh, take a pump or a fan and can slow down its speed, you can, you can save quite a bit of energy, depending on how much you can slow it down and still accomplish your goals. And, and it so happens that on a, uh, on, a, on a type of load, which we call a variable torque load, as you slow down the speed, um, the amount of energy saved will actually vary with the cube of that speed. So in, in, in long and short, it, you know, for example, if you could slow it down only 20% and run at 80% speed, you'd save half the energy of that motor as compared to running at full speed. Now, the other type of application is, uh, uh, the other reason you might want it is in a constant torque load. And in a constant torque load, it, it is really more about, say, about controlling the process and, and having things happen at the right time as opposed to saving energy. But there's a little bit of energy saving that you can get even in that case. So it's a more of a regulator of activity. Exactly. It's, it's, sometimes it's about making things arrive in the process at the right time. If you think about a conveyor belt and how they are um, loaded, you know, maybe at the conveyor belt runs at a warehouse to the, to the end loading dock, perhaps uh, you can't have them showing up too quickly or they're going to overflow the end and, and the shippers won't be able to handle them. So there's there's multiple reasons for why. So in why. a way it's less process variability, really. It really is. It's decreasing is. the process variability. Okay. So if I decide I want to install a drive, how much energy could I expect to save? Um, well, as I said earlier, you can, if it's on the right type of load, if it's on a, a pump or a fan, which we, what we call a centripetal load, um, the, it's uh, a variable torque characteristic, which means that the torque will vary in a kind of a curve, a quadratic curve with the speed. And what that really says is that the energy savings will vary with, with another multiple of that or the cube of that speed. So um, you could ex it depends on how slow you can run it. If you can run it you know, at a half speed and still get everything done, you're only going to use an eighth of the energy. That's one half cubed. Why wouldn't you just sprawl, buy a smaller drive or fewer horsepower and um, get the same result? Well, there, there are cases where, um, like for example, in a, uh, in a typical HVAC type system, a fan type application, there are times on the hottest day of the year where you really do need to run that, that application all out to be able to attain the cooling, but that, that might be less than you know 3% of the time. Systems are always designed for their worst case scenarios, and yet we rarely run at those points. Uh, in addition to speed and energy savings, is there any other benefits sure. from a drive? The, uh, the drive not only has the ability to start and stop the motor and allow it to run at any speed you want it to, it also can control the ramp rates, so how quickly you get to those speed points. So for example, if you think about maybe a pump where you're, you're filling a pipe with, with, uh, with a fluid like water, um, if it's going to a closed valve at the end of that pipe and you just turn on that motor 100% speed, the water's going to come down the pipe very forcefully, hit that valve, and there's going to be a whole bunch of what we call water hammer. The pipe's going to shake. And, um, and that's going to go hard on the system. So we can control the ramp rates, the, what we call the acceleration and deceleration rates, to do that very gradually so that we fill the pipe and we don't have that water hammer and that stress in the system. It's kind of like driving a car, whether you're slamming on the brakes or slamming on the gas, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So it's, it's, it's a very gradual acceleration. Um, other reasons you might, uh, other advantages might be that uh, you might need to stop quickly. Um, if you think about putting a, a, a 
drive on a motor that drives a, a circular saw, for example, where that, that blade is spinning and as soon as you're through cutting whatever you're cutting, you really want that blade to come to a stop. If you put that on a standard drive with a standard motor controller, standard, excuse me, a standard motor controller with standard motor, and you kill that contactor, it's just going to freewheel and spin, and it'll spin for a very long time. Whereas if you use a drive, you can literally decelerate it very quickly and put that energy back into the drive so that the blade stops within a matter of seconds and there's no safety hazard. Can, can every application benefit from using a drive in it? Um, many can, but actually not all. There are some applications where it, it just doesn't make practical sense to put a drive on it. You could put one on it, but if the motor literally has to run 100% speed all the time and there's, and there's no reason, to, no, no benefit from a ramp, then, um, then you could use a drive, but you wouldn't have any real advantage in doing so. What kind of application would that be? Oh, uh, some of the really small, low horsepower applications. You, you think about maybe your exhaust fan in your bathroom. It would be hard for me to come up with a real good reason for why <laughs> to put a drive on right. something like yeah. that. Yeah. Conversely, are there certain applications that would you know really benefit from using a drive? Sure, and, and uh, most of those would. Seventy-five percent of the drive applications thereabout are are on pumps and fans. And, and they are there because that we're talking about energy saving capabilities. And the larger applications you go to, the more energy you can save. The other thing that, that happens is that um, motors, when they start, they draw a, a what we call an inrush of current, which is somewhere between six and ten times their normal current. So like, like turning on a water faucet? It, well, it's like... Um, it's when, you, when you first start that motor, there's a big slug of current that comes in, and, and then it levels out. Well, the, uh, if you can find a way to minimize that slug of current, you don't have to design for the mechanical constraints that that, that jump start causes. So in that case, um, you're, you can do that because the drive can only deliver 100 to 150 percent of its nominal rated current. So. It's never going to do that to a motor. It's not going to have that, that really high inrush current that results in that really mechanical jarring at the start. Thanks, Rick. That was very informative. Is there someplace else I could go for more information? Sure. You can go to abb.com, and all the information is right there underneath the drive section of the website. Thanks, Rick. You're welcome.